Five years before A Realm Reborn, a Garlean known as Nail Van Darnus tried to bring down a moon on top of Eorzea. Except it wasn't a moon. It's a space station. And despite everyone's best efforts, it began to crash into the planet, breaking apart in the atmosphere, releasing a super powerful primal named Bahamut, and starting the seventh Umbral Calamity. At the same time, the grandfather of Alfino and Alice, Louis Sois Levior, henceforth referred to as Louis, played his Uno reverse card in order to try and reseal Bahamut with the primal of the Twelve Gods of Eorzea. It failed, and it looked like everyone was going to die, except Louis put us, the Warrior of Light, in stasis, until the world was safe. Then everything went white, and the people of the realm forgot what happened next. Five years later, the Warrior of Light comes out of the time spell, shows up in Eorzea, and A Realm Reborn happens. At the end of A Realm Reborn, there's a giant roar, which turns out to be a slumbering Bahamut, but we don't know that yet. You meet up with Alice for the first time since you were initially introduced to her and Alfino, and go on your first quest together. Remember, this raid is... optional. Turns out that there are giant tunnels beneath Eorzea formed since the Calamity, and we need to investigate them. What do we find down there? Corrupted crystals, a giant wing, a giant hand... Oh yeah, and the decapitated, still-living head of Bahamut. Neat. Turns out Bahamut didn't actually die, and is being sustained by the ruins of his old jail cell, which both traps him and keeps him alive, and which we call the Binding Coils of Bahamut, of which there are four. At this time, the Warrior of Light turns off the first Binding Coil in an attempt to halt Bahamut's regeneration, and sees the ghost of Lewis and Nail, and everyone is confused. The Phantoms of the Past disappear, and the party leaves. Ariange doths and these, and we come up with a new plan, and then head back down to turn off another coil. On our way down, we find the ghost of Nail, who's totally lost it and is serving Bahamut as her god. We fight a Dragon Lady version of her that will never come up again, and after we kill her, she gets killed again by an off-screen Swords of Revealing Light. Alice and Co. shut off the second binding coil only to get an etheric bitch slap from Lewis, who warns Alice to piss off or not do it again. Bop, bop. She doesn't, and instead drags her brother into things as we prepare to venture into the heart of Bahamut's lair one last time. As the three travel through the final gauntlet, they come face to face with Bahamut's history and the atrocities and cruelty of Alag, the Alagan Empire having tried to conquer the continent of Merisidia, resulting in the death of the real Bahamut and the summoning of him as a primal who is then caught and placed inside Dalamud to act as a literal Energizer bunny to redirect solar rays from the stars to the Crystal Tower, providing unlimited energy for Alad. To keep Bahamut alive, they kept dragons brainwashed and trapped in tubes, using their faith to fuel him. Alice is like, oh f and we're like, f but resolved that even if the atrocities of the past warrant justice, Bahamut must be stopped for the sake of Heidel. The trio reaches Bahamut at last, who is nearing a full resurrection, but as they try to shut off the third coil, Lewis shows up and talks mad shit, gaslighting them about their cause, until the twins tell him to shut his tempered ass up, and Alfino blows everyone's mind by announcing that Lewis in fact himself has become a primal. To which, Lewis goes full Phoenix Force and combat ensues. After beating their furry grandfather, Lewis is freed from Bahamut's control and in his last moments flashes back to what happened that day over Cartnow. The plan to seal Bahamut having failed, the Aether that was meant for the primal of the Twelve, and Eorzea's desire to be saved, infused Lewis, and he went full Dragon Ball Z, kamehameha his way right through Bahamut. As Bahamut broke apart, he pulled what remained of Lewis's Aether into himself, and they fell beneath the earth. Lewis then has a heartwarming moment of pride in his grandchildren, and shuts off the third coil of Bahamut before yeeting himself into the ethereal sea. The Warrior of Light and Co. then prepares to shut off the fourth and final coil, but Bahamut nearly obliterates them all by I'M A FIRE IN THE LASER! Knowing they can't take another blow, Alfino and Alice create a shield, giving the Warrior of Light just enough time to dive into a literal heart of darkness to face off against Bahamut Incarnate. Defeating him while sick beats play in the background, the Warrior of Light returns to the twins, and they shut off the final coil. As they do, Bahamut begins to dissipate, his Aether returning to the land, and so begins the true start of the restoration of Eorzea, and the end of a five millennia long nightmare. Realizing that they had to hide the truth of the Phoenix Primal, lest the people of Eorzea try to summon it to solve all their problems, the twins resolve never to shed light on the truth of what happened in the Binding Coils, explaining why they never really mentioned it, and the party returned above ground. Everyone saying their goodbyes, they part ways, until the Warrior of Light meets Alice at the Burning Wall in Thanalan, where she offers a flower and prayers for all those lost to the tragedies surrounding Bahamut. Preparing to leave, she promises she might have a tale or two to tell the next time they meet. But all of this doesn't matter, because most of you probably played Heavensward without having done this anyway. This content was brought to you by the Eorzean Archives. If you enjoyed this video, help us please the 12 by leaving a like and subscribing for new content every Thursday, and comment down below with any topic you'd like to see our Archons cover in the future. For even more content, discussion, and exclusives, please check out our Discord and consider supporting us on Patreon.